Hello, in this video we'll review another new feature in Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain version 42. It's called Financial Tag Default Rules. We had financial tags for a while now. We could have manually specify those on different journals, but now we can finally default financial tag values to these journals. So let's take a look at the functionality. If we navigate to General Ledger, Chart of Accounts, Financial Tax, we see the rules. Before we create the rules, we need to do a few things if you never used financial tax before. The first thing is we need to set up a delimiter. So we'll go to Ledger Setup, Parameters, and in here under Financial Tax, we need to select the separator between different financial tag values. Let's say I'm going to use Dash. That's number one. And number two is you need to create at least one tag. So if you go to Financial Tag, Let's say I'll use one called projects and it will be coming from my list of projects. And then I'll set up a second one called purpose and that will be custom list, tag values, finance, operations, service, for example. All right, so we have two financial tags. So now let's go and activate those two new financial tags. We can do that by clicking on activate, deactivate tags, add these two tags to our list and clicking on OK. So the system scheduled a periodic job to activate those tags. It usually doesn't take that long to activate those. Let's refresh and now we see that both tags are active. Now let's take a look at the rules. Let me get to financial tag rules. And here we see those six default rules that are system rules. Those cannot be edited. And basically what they do is copy tags specified on a journal header to the lines. So for example, we see that currently system supports four types of journal with financial tax. This is a general journal, allocation journal, reporting currency adjustment journal, and vendor invoice journal. And if we look at an example, this rule right here, all it does if you go to the condition is defaults all tax from the header. And all of those six rules right here are basically doing the same thing. They are copying the tax specified on the header to the lines. Now let's go and create a new rule. And I want to, for example, copy project financial dimension value to project financial tag value on our header. Let's see if it's possible. In here, I will select the entry point. Those are the four journal types that are currently supported with financial tags. So I'm going to select journal journal. Uh, here I will select the level. So I'm specifying the financial tax for the journal header, journal line account, or journal line offset. Let's say I want to do it for the header, right? Because I want to copy the project financial dimension from the journal header to the project tag value on the header as well. And in here I'll select one of my financial tax projects. I will make sure it's enabled and override the values. And in here I have two ways of defining. I can either specify RFX formula or I can specify the condition. And once the condition is specified, the system will then automatically generate the formula for me. So let's see what options are available here. So my condition is if journal batch number is not blank, which it will not be because every journal will have a journal number automatically generated by a number sequence, then I want to enter the project value as one of the few. And in here, when you look at the values that I can use, I can either enter a custom text in this box right here, so I can specify the project financial tag value manually right here, or I can leave it as is, or I can copy a journal batch number. So unfortunately, right here, I cannot copy financial dimension value from the header to the financial tag. I can only copy the journal batch number, which is not quite useful in my situation. Maybe down the road, we would be able to copy financial dimensions from the header to the financial tax, but that's not currently possible. So what about if I want to drive my financial tax on the line level? Well, in this case, I need to go and change the transaction level to the account. It's going to say that it's going to reset the power effects formula. I'm going to say yes. In here, I will update the purpose and click on new condition. What about if my purpose is driven by the main account that is used? So in here, my condition will be my main account begins with, let's say, with 11. And if it begins with 11, then I would like to use finance. Then I will add another condition and say if my main account begins with 12, then my purpose tag should be operations. And then this is a catch-all, otherwise or else it will be defaulting to the third and final value for my purpose, which is service. Now, if you create that condition and then look at the formula, 
you see the system automatically generated that formula for us. So we don't have to be versed in PowerFX to write the conditions. Let's go and click on OK. So now we have this brand new rule right here. You see it's not a system rule. Let's see that it targets a specific purpose tag. And now let's test it. So here I navigate to general journal. Let me create a new journal. And let me go to financial tags and let me specify my project, for example, 02, and let me specify a tag of service. So this is specifying tags on the header. And remember, we have a rule, that system rule, that should automatically copy tag values from the journal header to journal lines. So let's see if the project 02 and the purpose service are copied. Click on lines. And see under financial tax, we see project 02 and the purpose service. So we know that default system rule works. Now let's see if our custom rule that should update purpose based on the account number works as well. So in here I have a ledger and let me just type in the one that starts with 11. So for example, this right here. So when I specify my main account that starts with 11, we can see that the financial tag purpose has been updated to finance. That is to be expected based on the rule that we have created. Now, if we specify a main account that starts with 12, for example, we see that the purpose has been updated to operations. Again, this is just following that condition that we have created. And then if we specify an account that starts with 13, we see the tag has changed to service. But remember, any account except for the ones that starts with 11 or 12 should result in a tag of service. So even if I type in an account that starts, for example, with 2, the tag would remain service. So those are the basics of the financial tag rules. Let me show you an interesting behavior if we do not override. So let's come back to our rule that we have created. Go to Edit. Let's just say we do not override existing values. So whatever the values are, those will not be overridden. So you will see a much different behavior compared to what we just observed. So let's go back to our journal. Let's go and delete this line. And let's click on the new. So we see the project tag purpose defaulted. But if we go and try to enter account number that starts with 11, previously it changed purpose tag to finance. But now our rule does not allow override of existing values. So if we select the account 11, we still see the service as the purpose. So that's the main difference between application of that rule. Will it override an existing tag value that comes in from a header or was manually entered or will it not? Overall, I think it's just an evolution of financial tax framework, which was introduced recently and definitely a step in the right direction. I hope you found this video useful. Until the next time, take care.